Salut à toutes et à tous et bienvenue dans Story Series saison 3 épisode 21. It's been some time. Cette semaine, on s'offre une visite guidée dans l'univers cruellement féerique d'à la croisée des mondes en compagnie de son héros, Lynn Manuel Miranda. Lee Scoresby. I can fight and I can fly. I don't come cheap and neither should I. Derrière ces faux airs d'acteurs dilettantes tout en simplicité, Lynn Manuel Miranda cache un bourreau de travail qui collectionne les récompenses. Auteur, compositeur, réalisateur, producteur, il alterne les séries, le cinéma et les comédies musicales à Broadway, notamment la déjà culte Hamilton, pour laquelle il a obtenu deux Tony Awards et un prix Pulitzer. Alors que sa première pièce, In the Heights, connaîtra une seconde vie au cinéma, l'été prochain, Lynn Manuel Miranda nous raconte, à la croisée des mondes, adaptation grandiose du best-seller de Philippe Pullman. So what was your relationship with uh, His Dark Materials? I've heard you were yeah. kind of in love with it already. Yeah, I read them in my 20s. Um, when my wife and I started dating, we were kind of, you know, you, you remember the songs you listened to when you were first dating, but you also remember the things you read together. And we read uh, that series at the same time and, and sort of fell in love with them. It's such an incredibly rich world. Yeah, so I, I associate it with that. And it's a wonderful world to be in. Philip Pullman creates a very complete uh, set of universes uh, with these books. Running around with a child's mind. Woo! Man gets lucky just a couple of times. Sing it, Hester. The fact that I get to spend time with it in, spend time inside it in a physical form uh, by doing this TV show is really a dream come true. You're excited. Damn right I am. How did you react when you were asked to do it? Was it like, oh, it's destiny, of course? Uh, no, I was very surprised. I was very surprised when they asked yeah. me, especially Lee Scoresby, who I, you know, I don't think I'm the first person on anyone's casting list when it comes to Lee Scoresby, but uh, Jane Tranter and Jack Thorne uh, approached me about that, and I was so honored, and I remember telling my wife that night, because they took me out to dinner, and then I went home and told my wife that night, and she was like, oh, cool. And, uh, and so that was when I said yes, when I saw my wife go, oh. It was, it was interesting. You became your wife's hero. Uh, I, Again? Yes. I, well, I'm always trying. <laughs> You're bleeding. Hazard of the job. And what job do you do? I'm an aeronautics. What part of being an aeronaut? Let me give you a tip, kid. Never upset a seagull. You're not serious. Not if I can help it. There are many themes in the, in the books, and my two favorites, I would say, is on one side, the loss of innocence, and on the other side, the importance of collaborating. Yeah. You won't go far alone. You have to trust right. people. And how do you apply those two things to your life as an artist? Yeah, I mean, what's, what's interesting about that is, you know, I've read Philip Pullman's writing about his writings. He, re yeah. he released this book of essays called Demon Voices last year, um, and, and how he was really sort of exploring Milton's Paradise Lost. Mm -hmm. um, and it was sort of a riff on that that begat uh, his dark materials. And Jack Thorne, our writer, has sort of expressed in a different way, which is greatness versus goodness, which is a lovely way of putting the theme of, there are many people who try to do quote unquote great things, yes. but the cost to the people around them is often not that great. Um, whereas Lyra um, is always trying to do the right thing. And in doing that sort of makes the world a better place, as opposed to trying to be great. Yes. She just tries to, to do what's right. Turn around, walk away with me, please. She's just a kid, but she talks some sense. These people need our help, Yorick. Let's go get it. This isn't who you are. And then collaboration is the reason I get to talk to you. I mean, I yes. work in theater uh, for the most part, and you cannot create a great musical by yourself. You are dependent on your actors and your director and your choreographer and your music director and your designers. My favorite part of that process when I'm working on a musical is the moment I get to bring in a new song I've written to my collaborators yeah. and hear their ideas and they make my work better and I make their work better. Um, that's, that's the only 
uh, kind of art I'm interested in. I could never write a novel. It yeah. would be too lonely. <laughs> I like making things with other people, which is why I like being on film sets and why I love making musicals. I guess if you had a special relationship with this book, how did you get into the skin of Lee Scorsby? Did you have your own idea of this is how I want him to be? And did they allow you to be this version? Well, again, it comes back to collaboration. Yeah. Uh, when I saw Caroline's design for the outfit, I was 80% of the way there. Uh, it, was, it was such a cool um, and interesting approach to Lee, uh, different from what I'd seen in my head when I was yes. reading the books. Um, but as soon as I put it on, I was like, oh yeah, here he is. Well, that showed them. I like to think I made my point. And what point was that? Three watches in a wallet. I thought a lot about um, my late grandfather, my dad's dad, uh, Wiesing Miranda, who was obsessed with westerns, um, oh. who loved, you know, memorized every episode of Gunsmoke, every Clint Eastwood movie, every Lee Remick movie. He would always have like a dime store novel in his pocket. He had hundreds of them. And if he, if he ever stopped for the day, he would sit. I remember going to Disney World with him and I would go do the rides and he would sit reading his western novels. <laughs> That's and so very classy. I, and so I think about that and I think about all right, am I playing Gary Cooper in High Noon? I think about his heroes in that genre and trying to embody sort of the best of them. What do you like about this fantasy world? Is it about escapism or is it about what we learn from it through metaphors or? I think what's incredible about this world is it's so adjacent to our own, yeah. but I think it also captures our imagination. I wasn't gonna miss this. York's first ride. I'm not happy. I'm not a horse. <laughs> as soon as you read that book, you think, all right, well, if my soul had a physical manifestation and were an animal, what would it be? It makes you think about yourself. The themes of authority versus freedom mm -hmm. um, in terms of what, what we are allowed to do, what we, what we think of as, as freedom, what forces are trying to curtail those freedoms, whether that's uh, religious or governmental, uh, authority. And then also there's just these incredible characters. Yeah. Uh, you know, there's Lyra and there's Lee and there's Yorick and uh, it's it's just an incredible world and you, you fall in love with them and you want to know what happened. Why would they take someone's demon? It's about control, isn't it? Because if you can remove someone's soul, you can do anything. <laughs> Yeah, our furry friend here doesn't deal too well with emotion. Never has. He'll be back at first light. <laughs> you did a brave thing, kid. Good thing. I'm proud of you. I found the cast was very diverse, mm -hmm. which was so cool to watch. Yeah. And do you think this is one of the evolutions we have to be careful uh, about when we do television nowadays or any type of fiction? The challenge with adapting any book is that you are taking these characters that people had in their minds yeah. and you were putting them on screen. The Hermione in my mind, uh, you know, may be very different from the Hermione on stage or the Hermione on screen. And so that's always just interesting. Um, what I love about what Jane and Jack have done with the cast of His Dark Materials is it's an incredibly diverse world. They've actually done the thing that so few fantasy series do, more and more are doing it, which is that it is fantasy. We are in another plane of existence. You can populate it however you like, which yes. means you have the license to populate it as diversely as you like. Um, and so the fact that they've done that is very uh, exciting and cool. Um, because if we can't even be diverse in our fantasy, like what a failure of imagination that is. Um, so uh, I'm, I'm very proud to be a part of it. Something that sticks with you is how much of a hard worker you are and how aware you are that you can't get anything without working yeah. the hardest you can. I have incredibly hardworking parents. I have never yeah. uh, lived in a time when my parents only had one job each. They both worked a lot. I often tell people I am the laziest member of my family. Oh, you are? Uh, oh, by a lot. Okay. Um, and, and yet, I still get a lot done because that's just, the bar was so high yeah. in my house growing up. The Great War is coming no, no, soon. No more fancy talk. I'm just a hustler. I played my part. 
I was useful for a piece, but I'm no use to you now. You're wrong. And it's Lyra who will need you. So this is still about fate? Of course it is. She needs me. She needs all of us. Then I hope I'm strong enough. But what is it that drives your choices, then? Um, my own gut, making my wife laugh, <laughs> making my kids laugh. Really? Um, the stuff that I thought was missing or I would have loved to see when I was a kid. Yeah. I think a big part of being an artist is being in touch with your inner child, or at least being able to check in with your inner child. Yes. Um, you know, I'm a grown up, but, <laughs> but I also, sometimes I'm on set on the show and think about me at age 10, trying to do the stunts I'd seen in the movies yes. uh, while watching TV and thinking, oh, I get to do that today. Um, so it's about checking in with that person and, yeah. and making sure that uh, you're doing stuff that every version of you could be proud of. Cliff guests. I hate Cliff guests. How important was television for you growing up? Because TV series well, it was today a co are best friends. A co-parent, yes. <laughs> it was a co-parent. Like I said, my parents had a lot of jobs. Yes. So I had a lot of time with television. Um, and so, yeah, I read those studies that say too much television like rots your kids' brains. I was like, that that's very well could be true, but my brain is rotten in all the best you ways. Seem okay. um, and yeah, I spent a ton of time watching television. And it was whatever was on. This was pre-streaming, this was yes. pre-cable for the most part. So it was whatever was on, I was watching it. You know, I, yeah, that was my relationship to it. It was just on, I would put it on to go to sleep. Uh, I would put it on first thing in the morning. Uh, that's not the healthiest thing, but it's an <laughs> honest answer. Thank you so much. Thanks. I adore you. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to win this one, aren't we? We're going to get those children back. Well, if I was a bet man, I'd say no. And I am a bet man. But I can tell from your face you want me to say yes, so... Yes. You're not an easy man to like, you know that, Lee. So people tell me. Story Series, c'est terminé. La semaine prochaine, on rencontre l'actrice la plus douée de sa génération. Hello? La brillante servante écarlate, Elisabeth Moss. There you are. Allez, à la semaine prochaine.